I bet you don't know at least one of these building tips in Rust. Have you ever been building a gatehouse and realized the terrain doesn't let you build out a detachable external TC? If your foundations don't connect directly to your main base, or if you just don't want to have foundations on the ground, you can use floor frames instead to directly connect them to your main base. And if you have issues with stability, connect it to your main base first and then fill in the center. The upkeep for your gatehouse is now connected to your main TC in your base. If you've got some jump ups like this and one of the walls faces inside of your shooting floor, there's two cool things that we can do with this to make it even better. The first one is to use a half floor and a quarter wall. And if you need stability above it, you can put this floor frame here. And what this does is gives you a nice big peek down where you can throw grenades, smoke grenades, and fire rockets into your shooting floor and even cover breaches. The second option is to put a window frame here and this is gonna make it harder to shoot outside if you're getting raided, but it is really good for retaking your base if you've got multiple entrances into your shooting floor. And it also gives you a pretty good little view of inside your shooting floor if anybody ladders in or something. This is the ultimate comfort healing station that I don't see people do too often. You place a bear rug next to a workbench with furnaces while they're running, you get heat you get 100% comfort to heal and you can craft all at the same time it's a really good afk spot and also a healing station these next few tips kind of go hand in hand so make sure you're paying attention if you're a noob to electrical and industrial it only costs about 297 scrap to learn everything in the tech tree but what i recommend doing is going out and searching for the parts first by running monuments and then learning it in a research bench because as you're playing you might come across things that you need and it'll be a whole lot cheaper to just learn it straight away in the research bench rather than learning everything in the tech tree first off we got the most simple auto smelter in the game it only utilizes one power requires one or two solar panels depending on if you decide to use the extra nine power for anything. Everything is hooked up to this one box and you dump everything in here, including your wood. The output of the box goes into the input of the conveyor and the output of the conveyor goes into a splitter, which goes into the furnaces. If you don't have a splitter or a combiner yet, you can just use one furnace until you do. And the combiner goes into the box, which goes back into the conveyor. Since the furnaces only allow particular resources in each slot, the refined resources will stay in the box and they will not go back into the furnace. This is literally all you need to do this. There's no reason you should ever not be able to do this. And if you come across an igniter or a button, you don't need any power for this at all. You can just put the output into the igniter and you can light all your furnaces at once if they're in a hard to reach spot. Are you keeping up with that? Cause it's about to start getting crazy. Once you've got your compound all set up, I recommend having some gatehouse designs that include drop boxes within them so that we can connect them to a single drop box inside of the base. So if you've got four gatehouses out here, you can connect them all together with combiners. This is super useful. So you don't have to run through your base and open 10 million doors just to depot some loot if you need to get back into the action. So we're going to put all of these together here in this combiner. And then if you've got more, you can bind them all together, bring that single output from those boxes into another drop box inside of your base, and then connect it all up. Don't forget that you can connect more than one box together with this single conveyor and it'll dump it within all of those boxes if you want to put that in a whole loot room instead of just a single box on the inside. Also, the reason I'm using a combiner out here and not connecting the boxes directly together is so that I can use it as an extension cord to reach my other three gatehouses. Once you get tired of manually sorting your loot in your base from these depot boxes that you've got set up, it's time to do the most simple auto sorting system in the game. It just requires one or two solar panels and a small battery. Here's the gatehouse depot boxes that we would have all linked together everything's gonna get sucked up and auto sorted remember that this conveyor does not have any filters these two boxes are the ones that are going to be inside your base and remember i said earlier you can link up more than one or two if you want to have a whole loot room of these boxes they act as your buffer box where everything gets sucked in from outside and then it goes into the sorter to get sorted into your main loot rooms the system for that is quite simple for this one we're doing two loot rooms so we only need four splitters each splitters output has a conveyor on it all the power is linked together between the conveyors, which all runs off one small battery. And then you just connect each conveyor up to a box and set the filters on them. Also, don't forget that you don't need to have just a singular box on the output of each conveyor. It could be a whole loot room dedicated to one conveyor, and then you could have up to eight loot rooms attached to the system. Here's the supplies you will need for the entire system. Super simple, and you should already have everything if you've done the automated furnace setup. All right, let's relax a little bit on that whole electrical stuff and get into something more fun. Everybody knows you can put things on the workbench, but have you ever actually taken the time to see what and how many things you can fit on it? Keep in mind that some of the things like the shotgun trap, I'm pretty sure are getting placed on the wall, not the workbench itself, unlike that. Uh, so if you're having trouble with that, your workbench is not pushed all the way up against the wall. This is a great way to save some space if you use a lot of deployables. You can place a locker between a single doorframe and a double doorframe with zero collision, meaning you can sprint through it and jump by it, no problem. 
smush yourself as far back as you can possibly go in the triangle and try to center yourself. You want to tilt it to the right a little bit. If you put it perfectly straight, it's not going to work. These next few tips are for the newer players. I feel like this is something that needs to be said, so I don't want to hear it if you already know these two. When you are building the shelf in your TC room, you don't need to go outside twice. Come out here, place your twig down, and then place your shelf for your TC room through the wall and destroy everything all in one go. You can get real good at this to a point where you can even do it in the dark in just a couple seconds. Oh, look, this guy's got a tier two and his two by one. I think I'm going to raid it. Stop using window doors that show your base loot, all right? I mean, people can still see it like this when you're online, but at least when you're offline, they're not going to be able to see anything through your doors. I mean, like you can see through both windows during the night with a flashlight. This one is a fun tip. If you have trouble navigating through your base, especially in larger ones, you can power disco floors without using audio, and then it'll just be a static image. So you power it like a light and it's even got a pass through on it. You can do pretty colors, but I like the black and white in and out because it makes a nice little outline of the box. You don't need power to get fresh water. Stop recycling your barrels and water catchers. Put your water catchers on your roof, connect it directly to your barrel. Boom, you got fresh water coming in. Look, I'll fill it up with water to prove it to you. This works on this uh, freaking whatever this is called that goes on the fire thing, your water purifier. Boom, you got fresh water coming in. Oh, you need more water. It's not enough water. You just put more water catchers on the roof. Daisy chain them together. Look, look at this. Look at this. The water goes through them. You don't even need you don't even need power for this. I mean, easy, easy fresh water source right here. Come on. Also, wh while we're at it, stop telling me I put my abrasions on wrong. Look how stupid this is. I don't got any view range on this whatsoever. If you put them on the inside like this, it, it doesn't make a difference at all. You get a way bigger view, view, view. I mean, just look at this. Come on. What are you doing? All right, I got one more goofy tip for you. You can make some seriously small car bases by squeezing the uh, little little thing through doors, whatever it's called. You can access the car through a door over here, swap seats to get to the driver's seat. Boom, you're ready to go. You can use this through the door. And then like I got my TC to the left over here. And then from the outside, it's just a one by three with some triangles on the side. And you can do this with a single door frame. Uh, I don't know what purpose this serves, maybe like a trap base or something, but you can squeeze it underneath a half height wall like that too. This one is something I do not see people do enough. They think that just because their bags overlap, you should not have multiple bags inside of your base. I do not agree. I think you should have multiple beds and bags throughout every floor of your base with these raid defense boxes and fill your lockers up with some kits you know what i mean throw some stuff like this inside of each one of these little boxes next to a bag so you can seal if they destroy one of your bags okay you made it this far in the video i got a couple bangers for you at the end of it thank you for sticking around that means you probably learned something or you found this interesting so what are you doing support the video leave a comment down below letting me know what some tips you think are good that nobody else knows and let's get into the last three you ever been on your roof and your teammates are screaming at you to come down, but you got to go through 32 doors just to get down there and don't want to break your legs? Well, you should have one of these on your base and you can put it on any base. It's called a waterfall. You want it to face your base so that people can't jump out of your compound if you got walls. And the way I got that triangle floating is really simple. You just put a floor, you put the triangle down and then you can break the floor. And for some reason, it has enough stability to stay there. So that's a cool little waterfall design right here that you can do. If you've got any spot in your base where you can put frames like this, including square frames, you should do so, so that if you're getting raided, you can just plop down a floor grill. It's instantaneous. There's no chance for the twig to get shot up because it's a floor grill. You can scatter them around in small boxes throughout your base, and they're just as strong as a sheet metal door, and you don't gotta wait to put them down from the stupid little blocker thing when doors and walls break. Uh, you can see through it. There's so many benefits, and you should totally, totally be doing this. If uh, the raiders don't break it, you can do that little glitch where you look up at the wall, kill yourself, and you can transfer loot out of your base if you ever need to do that. And we save the best for the last. What do you see when you look at this loot room? You see a double door that's locked and opened. Well, I mean, that's really all there is to it. A bunch of unlocked boxes in there. But if you're the owner of the base, you take that off. Boom, you got a hidden box back here. Throw all your rockets in there. You're good to go. The top of the little double door frame blocks it, makes it impossible to see it. And it's uh, super hard to see it if it's got no skin on the box. I've been using this for years. I've never seen anybody do it. I've never seen it in a video. I've watched a lot of videos. So I figured it was finally time I share this tip with the world. Just make sure you never close this door. You can make this your depot room or whatever like how we did over here with these two boxes your buffer boxes can go in there and all that'll be in those boxes is a bunch of trash because everything else got sorted to your main loot room thanks for watching bye